Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This video is about transformers and I will start with the ideal transformer. Now an ideal transformer basically is a transformer without loss. So it is a lossless device. And I'm sure by now you know what is a transformer. Uh, we have a core and we have a windings on the primary side and then windings on the secondary side. This is primary voltage, primary current and number of primary turns. Similarly, secondary voltage, secondary current and number of turns in the secondary. And to give you an idea, this core is actually something like this, used of uh, uh, steel materials, slices of steel, and this is to reduce actually eddy current losses. Now, these formulas, I'm sure again you know, but we'll just quickly revise them. The ratio of the voltages, V primary divided by V secondary, is given by the N primary or the number of turns on the primary and divided by number of turns in the secondary. And this is also represented by a letter A, where A is the turn ratio. Now in case of current, the formula gets reversed, that is phase current at the top and uh, uh, primary current at the top, secondary current at the bottom, but the transformer windings now revised. Instead of primary at the top, it is secondary at the top and primary turns in the bottom. And so this will become 1 over A. So this we have to keep in mind. And just a tip to remember because uh, sometimes at least I had difficulty to find out what is A. So very simple, you primary at the top and you keep secondary at the bottom. That's the easy way to remember. You can also remember by papa at the top and son at the bottom. Okay, now uh, di diagrammatically the transformer is represented by either this or this. And no difference, the, the middle line actually is showing that the core material is of iron or steel. This is the iron core transformer. And if then there is no uh, core, then most likely it is air core uh, or any other material, plastic or whatever. Now, if we convert uh, these um, the instantaneous voltages into phasor form, then we can write that V phasor over V, V. Um, primary phasor and V secondary phasor ratio is equal to A and I uh, primary phasor divided by I secondary phasor is 1 over A from here. Then uh, to give you an idea the power N is given by VPIP cos theta which is also equal to VSIS cos theta is and which is also equal to P out. So the key point to remember is that the power does not change. The power in the primary is equal to power in the secondary. And this was the real power. Same is for the reactive power. I will not go into the details. Just remember that the power remains same. And same is true for the apparent power or complex power. The power in or power on the primary side is power on the secondary side same. And now we will see the impedance transformation through a transformer. What does it mean is that if we have a load impedance, what is the effect on the primary side of this or how can we represent this in the primary side. So we will see this. Now the load impedance ZL is given by Vs over Is, the secondary voltage divided by current. And if we assume that there is an impedance here due to this, which is called ZL dash, this is the apparent impedance, then ZL dash can be represented as the primary voltage divided by secondary voltage. Uh, sorry, primary voltage divided by a primary current. 
Now we know from the formula that primary voltage Vp is A times Vs and the primary current Ip is uh, Is divided by A. So we'll use these values here. So we can say that ZL dash which was Vp over Ip putting in the value of Vp from here Avs and Ip Is over A from here and solving uh, we can see that it is A square ZL. So what does this represent? Is that whatever was the load ZL that will be multiplied by square of the number of turns and it will then be represented in the primary. So its effect on the primary will be by multiplication by A square. Now let's see an example. So we can write that ZL dash is A square ZL. Now this will be clear from an example here. Let's say this is an amplifier. It has 6,400 uh, 6, uh, ohms, its output uh, impedance. And we have a, uh, a speaker uh, whose impedance is 8 ohms. Now, to have a maximum power transfer, these two should match. And for that, we are using a matching transformer. And we'll just use this formula to find the transformer ratio. So A square is ZL dash over ZL. ZL dash is 6400 ZL8. So it is 800. And therefore A, A is under root of 800 will be 28.24 turns. So that means that if we uh, take primary turns as about 3000 turns, then the secondary turns will be 106 turns. And so this transformer will easily match the two loads because this load reflected on this side will become 6400. So there will be matching of equal load. Okay, now we come to uh, the question given in the book. A single phase power system consisting of 480 volt 60 hertz generator. So this is 480 volt generator and this is at a uh, let's say power station or generating station it's supplying a load ZL4 plus J3 so this is the load through a transmission line uh, line impedance is given here we are, what will be the voltage at the load so load voltage we need to find and what will be the transmission line losses so this is simple, we can just uh, straight away uh, we'll solve it, I'll show you that. But let's also see the second part of this question. The same load is now connected through two transformers. This is generator, one transformer, then this is line. So you can say that at the generating station we are uh, raising the voltage by 1 to 10. So transforming up transmitting it through the transmission line and then near our home, near the distribution point, we are reducing this again uh, by 10 to 1 and so uh, using it to power the load. So what will be the effect of this? Same load, same transformer, same line, uh, sorry, same generator, same line, only we are using two transformers, one for up and one for down. So in this case also we have to find the load voltage and we have to find the transmission line losses and then we can compare the two. Okay, so this was part A. We have to find the uh, voltage here and we have to find the transmission line losses. So let's first of all find the current in the circuit. We know that IG that is the generator current is same as I line and same is I load. So I line is the voltage or generator voltage divided by this impedance. So it is 480 divided by the two impedances Z line and Z load. So we plug in here by solving, solving, we get this answer. So this is the line current. 
and now therefore the load voltage will be line current multiplied by z load so v load is line current multiplied by z load it comes to 454 and angle 0.9 now to find the line loss i square r so i square r from the line is this 0.18 because the drop is only in the resistive component so i square r is 1484 watt so this is the first part we have solved now let's go to the second part of the question with the transformer this is the question same question and we have to find the uh, voltage at the load and the transmission losses so how do you proceed to analyze the system it is necessary to convert to a common voltage level so we have to bring all these to a point where we have same voltage this is done in two steps the first step eliminate the transformer t2 so we eliminate this by a method of transformation we saw that the transformer can transform the loads so we we'll transfer this load here by using uh, the uh, transformer parameters and then we'll eliminate the transformer so this is first step and this will be done something like this you see this is the uh, impedance multiply by um, a which is 10 here so the z dash load will now become uh, sorry not 10 but 10 square or a square so a square or 100 multiply by 100 this becomes the z load and then we'll transform all these loads by eliminating this transformer p1 and so the circuit will become something like this and then it will we can easily find the current through this now these have all same voltage level so we can find current we can find the voltage drop here we can find the power loss okay so first step is that we transform the impedance on this side and i mentioned this is the formula that we are going to use primary over secondary is a so z dash load which is here now the transformed load on this side z dash load will be a square z load and a is 10 into our uh, 10 ratio 1 that means a is 10 so 10 divided by 1 square and multiply by this 4 into j3 so z dash load will be 400 ohms plus j 300 so in the next diagram when we have eliminated the transformer the load we are now becomes 400 plus j 300 and now we transform this load on uh, the uh, next side or the left generator side the total impedance of the transformation line is just the addition of these two and this is the z equivalent from this circuit and now when we transform the z equivalent here again we'll use this formula z equivalent is a square uh, z equivalent or a square z line plus z load now keep in mind that here a is now different primary is 1 and secondary is 10 so 1 divided by 10 square and multiply by the summation of these loads and so we are dividing actually by 100 all of these so we get this value and similarly z dash equivalent we get the value shown here so this is the final circuit now we have generator and this is z equivalent dash and now we can use this to find the current in the circuit so the generator current we have found the voltage divided by the z equivalent dash 
and now knowing the generator current ig ig we can now work back to find i line and i load so now we'll again bring in the transformer circuit we know this current so how much is this current by using this transformation ratio and then when we know this current how much is this current again we'll use the transform uh, ratio so working back through t1 this is t1 we know np ig is equal to ns i line so i line is np over ns over ig so i hope you remember this formula that it is just opposite so we using this formula and then the np over ns this is p1 and s is 10 so 1 over 10 and the value of ig from here solving we get this as i line so i line now we have found and then again same way uh, the formula for uh, turns and current we are now using here and now here np2 over ns np2 is 10 this is primary side so 10 divided by 1 i line we have found from here so we'll use that so this is the i load current okay so now we found out all the three currents for the circuit and now we need to find the voltage here and also the line loss so the load voltage we load is i load into z load i load we found from here so we'll use that and z load also we had calculated uh, this to be equal to 536.87 so we multiply the two and we get v load line loss is the i square into r i line is square into r i line we have found this here and multiply by r 0.18 so it is 16.7 watt and now let's compare the two this load we got for the circuit without transformer and this we have got for circuit with transformer now you can see the voltage drop here the voltage dropped 480 volt was there it dropped to 454 volt but with the transformer case it is hardly dropped by 0.3 so very less drop and the most important is the power loss look at the power loss here 1484 watt with transformer it is only 16.7 watt so it is about 90 times less uh, losses now in the real systems actually we generate power uh, somewhere between 4 to 30 kv then we use the transformers to bring it to 500 kv in pakistan we have 200 kv and 500 kv lines so this is the maxima we are changing everything to 500 kv because as you increase the voltage here the line losses will be reduced and then finally uh, we are using the step down transformer that you can see uh, in the grid stations and then to your house so the simple example dramatically illustrates the advantages of using high voltage transmission line now this can greatly decrease the transmission losses in power system when you increase the voltage to 500 kv so i hope this gives you an understanding as to how to solve the problem with transformer and what are the advantages thank you